How's it going everybody? Chaotic Meatball here and welcome back to the channel. I took a week off, but we're back at it again with another legendary speedrun. This time, we're taking a look at the second of the Gen 2 box legendaries in Lugia, and quite frankly, it's pretty bad. But at least we're working with a better typing in Psychic Flying for Kanto. We have the same problem where Lugia doesn't get an attacking move in Gust until level 22 like we did with Holo, so I'll be adjusting that to level 5 in order to put that on equal footing with the rest of the leaderboard we've got here, but that's as far as I can go. Looking at moves though, we've got some decent moves in here, uh, like Recover and Hydro Pump by level up, but it would be nice to get a hold of some of those other ones like Aeroblast and Ancient Power before the run ends. TMs are also in a good spot for Lugia since it gets Calm Mind, meaning moves like Ice Beam, Water Pulse, and eventually Surf, Giga Drain, Thunderbolt, and Psychic will all be amazing rooms for this run, but chances are I won't be going after those Game Corner TMs if I don't have to. Lastly, Lugia's stats are nothing to scoff at in the defensive apartment, with 106 HP, 130 defense, and 154 special defense, we shouldn't have any problem taking hits and shaking them off with recover. Since we'll have Calm Mind in the base, and since we'll have Calm Mind after the sixth gym, the base 90 attack and special attack shouldn't really mean much, since those are more than manageable for the first 70% of the game. Lastly, base 110 speed should mean that we're outspeeding everything, not using a priority move, so Lugia is definitely in good shape to outlast Hello, and perhaps even a few other legendaries as well. Leave a comment below guessing how much time it'll take Lugia to get through the region, and compare your guess to the leaderboard at the end of this video. I'm sure it'll be a great time. And make sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel, since we're only a little over 7,000 subscribers away from that fabled 100,000. Thank you guys for watching! So, I once again replaced Charmander for our Legendary of Choice simply because Blastoise will eventually be the biggest wall that Luigi will have to face. After all, the strongest super effective attack I'll have for it is only 60 power in this generation. Well, I guess there is Thunderbolt, but I'm not holding my breath or my money to get that. The first rival battle in the lab goes smoothly as three gusts are able to put down the future champ, allowing me to move on with some progression. By the time I got through routes 1, 2, and Viridian Forest, Lugia is only level 10 and heading into the Pewter City Gym, so we're not looking promising at all. The first Junior Trainer is a nightmare thanks to Sandshrew being able to land a good few sand attacks, meaning that I'm barely able to take out his Geodude with over a dozen gusts, getting down to 4 HP and basically proving that I can't take on Brock, but I'm stubborn and want to see it for myself. Yep, just keep clicking gusts there, buddy. Keep going. There we go, on to Onyx. And yeah, that was basically all I was expecting here. So I just went ahead and grabbed my repels from the Pewter City Mart before I forgot, then moved into Viridian Forest to grind. It was a short grind, only to level 14, but that didn't do enough to take out Brock's Onyx just yet. So I went back for a second round, getting Lugia to level 16 this time. If I go any farther, there's basically no chance that Lugia gets better than a C rank, so I figured I'd try Brock multiple times to see if he's beatable at this level. He leads with Geodude, so I'm able to get two gusts out before he uses Defense Curl, leading to me using Whirlwind to drag in Onyx and see if I can KO it first before dealing with the runt of the team. It lands a Rock Tomb for over a third of my HP, lowering my speed as I kept laying into it with Gust, going all the way down to 7 HP before managing to take out Onyx for the first time, leaving just Geodude. It's at 2 thirds HP still, so 4 Gusts through some Defense Curls is all I need to KO, winning me the Boulder Badge. Kinda surprised that a Flying type at level 16 was able to take out Brock, but if it was gonna be any Flying type, it was likely to be a bulky Legendary like Lugia. Obstacle number two in our way is Misty, and while I don't really have to worry about any of the trainers on Route 3 or in Mount Moon, capturing Spiro for our HM trade later on of course, I figured it would be smarter if I took on the second rival battle and Routes 24 and 25 first, simply so that I can get another move that isn't just Gust. Starting out is a Pidgeotto who goes down to three Gusts, but not before managing to land a single Sand Attack, along with some light damage, meaning I could be in trouble later on. Rattata ends up going fine as it only lands a single quick attack as two gusts taken out, leaving just Abra and Squirtle. Rival Man here goes for the ladder and goes to use frickin' Tail Whip. Okay, 
Uh, it gets a critical tackle, but it doesn't do much as Lugia is able to pull it six feet under with three gusts, leaving just the defenseless meat shield. And again, it's not like Abba really has any meats on its bones, it's just a defenseless distraction at best. See ya, chump. Of course, I have no problems with routes 24 or 25 getting the TM for secret power, and now that I think of it, if I save and reset the game back here, won't I be trapped since I don't have the HM for cut yet? It seems like an obvious softlock that probably shouldn't be able to be performed. I'll have to check it out in one of the legendary speedruns if I remember. And by remember, I mean it's not happening in next week's because I've already recorded it. Anyway, with the SS ticket in my hands, it's time to take out Misty, and there's not really much to worry about. So much so that I forgot to teach secret power to Lugia immediately, meaning the entire reason for going up there first was eventually nullified. She leads with Staryu, who goes down to two gusts before landing anything, leaving just Starmie to take three of them to the dome, going down and winning me the Cascade Badge. Somebody get me a Staples button, since that was easy. That was easy. Two badges down, six to go, and now that I've got access to a new coverage move in Water Pulse, I should have a slightly easier time. The Dig TM also isn't teachable to Lugia, so that's unfortunate. But weird though, it gets Earthquake, but not Dig. But I'll probably be able to handle Lieutenant Surge without it. Of course, I grabbed Farfetch'd in the bag voucher before heading onto the boat in order to fight Rival Man number 3, and of course he still has a similar team, this time with Pidgeotto going down in two gusts and not landing a single sand attack before going down, making the fight breeze. Ward Tortles out second and goes for a withdraw as I use three secret powers to take it out, leading to Raticate. And of course this thing's weak too, so a secret power and gust are able to take it out, leaving just Kadabra to be one shot by the power of secret power, winning me the fight. Perfect. Can't really ask for anything more. No accuracy deprivation, not much damage, just a clean fight that lets me get cut straight afterwards and head into the third gym. This gym does a quick from high to low though. Like, I get the first two trash cans immediately, but then after solving the puzzle, I immediately black out due to some bad luck, losing some money in the process, which is definitely not going to help me get TMs from the game corner, but I just went back in there, ran around the trainer that gave me trouble, and fought the single required guy with the Pikachu, heading straight for Surge. The first part of this fight starts extremely well, as Voltorb is first and immediately gets confused off of a water pulse that does over half, hitting itself as Lugia KOs with a second leading to Pikachu. Wonder Pulse once again manages to confuse his Pokemon, but Pikachu this time KOs itself, a hilarious sight to see, but Raichu's the main event here. But somehow, someway, Wonder Pulse manages to confuse Raichu as well on the first shot, with him hitting itself again before using a full heal next turn. Kinda wish you wasted that on one of the other two Pokemon, since Water Pulse gets him down into the red and forces a Super Potion next turn, with two more Water Pulses not being able to KO him. This leads to the regular rigmarole where he uses Thunder Wave, holds me down with ungodly precision as he sets up double teams, and nearly KOs me with a few shock waves, but Secret Power is eventually able to do him in, letting me get by with the Thunder Badge and a bit of a shaky victory. And as you guys may know by this point, it's time for the stretch of Route 9, 10, Rock Tunnel, and Route 8, and there's no better point in a video like this for some plugs. So, I already did a few at the beginning, but this is where I get to talk about everything else so that you guys have made it to this point probably care more about. Firstly, my Discord server has been pretty darn active as of late, and it's been really cool to see people having good conversations about general stuff, Pokemon, Yu-Gi-Oh, Pro Wrestling, there's a channel for a ton of different niches, and I love getting involved with your guys' conversations too. Secondly, follow me on Twitter, link is in the description, since lord knows I'm getting too big for YouTube not to notice that I exist, and in case they decide to sneeze or something and deletes my channel because of the arm flinch that comes from it, it'll be really helpful to have you guys behind me since that's the only way to get YouTube's attention, to pest them an ungodly amount of time on Twitter until they finally deal with your problem. Lastly, I've still got Patreon, and we're very close to the $400 mark. But I'm not making any new incentives since I'm still working on the shiny only Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee Professor Oaks challenge, but the fact that you guys still helped me get to that point is nutty to me. So if you want early access to videos, it's $5 a month, and yeah, that's it. Hope you guys are looking forward to that video, by the way.
With all that said, I finally got out into Celadon City, and a few things have changed about Lugia in between important boss fights. Mostly due to the fact that we got the TM for Aerial Ace over on Route 9, meaning we've got a bit of a stronger attack than Gust, but we're probably not keeping it for long after we get the TM for Calm Mind in a few badges. Secondly, I gave Lugia the TM for Shockwave, since I think this is going to get a bit more use out of it now than it would later, since the likelihood is, is that Giga Drain is going to replace it, especially for Lorelei and the Elite Four, and I'd rather have something to take out the early and mid-game water types, rather than having to rely solely on neutral damage. Now that the info dump is in your head though, I grabbed the HM for Fly and moved my merry bum into the Celadon City Gym where Erica awaits. I figured there was no reason for me to grab Psychic before this fight since I already have Aerial Ace, since it'll save me time if I just lump my trip into Self Company in with getting the TM. Erica leads with Victory Bell, so I just use Aerial Ace nearly one-shotting before taking a Stun Spore, but since I'm usually prepared, this time I am at least, the Cherry Berry negates it, leading to a Hyper Potion and two more Aerial Aces to KO and lead into Tangela. It goes down to a single Aerial Ace, leaving just Vile Plume. and fortunately, after the first Aerial Ace lands on it, it proceeds to miss its own Stun Spore, going down to a second and winning me the Rainbow Badge, and more importantly, the TM for Giga Drain. But I'll hold off a bit longer on teaching that. The fact that she didn't land Stun Spore with Vile Plume actually helps speed things along, since now I don't have to heal in between the gym and the rocket hideout, instead plowing through all of the required trainers in there before getting to Giovanni at the end. He leads with Onyx, which goes down to Water Pulse, shocking, I know, before Lugia levels up and learns Recover. I figured that I'd have to get rid of Secret Power here, since Aerial Ace, Water Pulse, and Shockwave are doing more than enough to carry Lugia here, moving on to Kangaskhan. Fake Out does flinch Lugia, but that doesn't matter since two Aerial Aces are still enough to KO without taking much damage at all in return, leaving just Rhyhorn to go to sleep thanks to a strong Water Pulse, finishing the battle and getting the Sylph Scope. This means it's time for Rival Man number 4, which is also starting to make me think it would be funny if I had some pixel art done of a Mega Man style Wily or Proto Man castle done for the Rival Man, since I don't ever remember what I named this guy in each of these runs. Anyway, he once again leads with Pidgeotto, easy enough to take down now that I have Psychic, one-shotting and leading to War Turtle. It's a two-shot after he uses Withdraw, doing no damage to me as Growlithe comes out third and gets extinguished with, with a Water Pulse. Fourth out is Kadabra and goes down to Psychic and Aerial Ace, using Kinesis to lower my accuracy, but since his last Pokemon is Execute, it doesn't matter since Aerial Ace skips the accuracy check, KOing and winning me the fight. See, now I wouldn't care if Pidgeotto used Stand Attack there, not that it really had a chance to do so. After clearing out the area and getting the Poke Flute though, I'm able to rip through the Snorlax fairly easily, and I'm also starting to wonder if I even have to fight this thing every time. I mean, can I just run away from this thing and still disappear? I might have to try that next time. Alas, I get through Cycling Road, grabbing my delicious head and items along the way before arriving in Fuchsia City, since oh lord, I'm about to massacre a ninja. Well, after collecting some HMs, of course. Everybody loves HMs. Also, I'm sure you're wondering to yourself, Hey Meatball, why didn't you teach Surf to Lugia immediately and replace Water Pulse? Well, it's mostly because I'm a dingus, and not to mention I'd rather not lock up a move slot just yet, since I'm thinking of making Bird Celebi happen again with Recover, Calm Mind, Giga Drain, and Psychic. Anyway, Coke is a pretty easy fight, though of course I'm only prepared some of the time, since he manages to KO me at the last possible moment thanks to a Toxic from Muck, and a sludge from Weezing after barely not going down to a psychic. Frustrating, but one day I'll remember that Pecha and Lumberries exist. One day. Attempt number two does go a lot better though, as I'm much better equipped to take on the situation. And by equipped, I mean I took on an extra optional trainer in the gym to get a quick level up so that Weezing would just go down to one psychic instead of staying alive. Koga leads with coughing, going down in one shot as Muck comes out second, and of course this attempt he uses Acid Armor, which is fine since we still have Agatha to deal with later, so saving my Pecha Berry is appreciated, going down to two Psychics as a second coughing goes down in one as well, leaving just wheezing. Sadly, I go for Aerial Ace, just in case Psychic doesn't one-shot so that I don't have him stuck into a healing routine, letting him hit a single sludge and eating the Pecha Berry anyway, cause it poisons. Well, so much for saving it, but he does go down to a Psychic next turn, leading me the last badge before the game ends. 
well, technically second to last, since I still need to beat Sabrina and get the Marsh Badge before she actually hands me the TM for Calm Mind. Self Company time, and Rival Man number 5 is here to try to wreck my sh once again, but he'll be rather disappointed. He leads with Pidgeot, finally fully evolved as Lugia still stands strong, nailing two Psychics as Lugia takes a light wing attack before Pidgeot goes down, with Blastoise following up. He goes for Protect as I go for Psychic, probably should have just used Recover to get the slight HP boost here, but that's fine as next turn it lands, doing a third as he goes for Bite. Fortunately, even though this is super effective, it's a weak non-stab move, so Lugia is able to tank it very well and heal it off with Recover next turn. From there, I just alternated between Psychic and Recover, eventually taking it out on the third Psychic, with his third Pokemon out being Growlithe. It doesn't go down to a single Water Pulse, unfortunately, anymore, so I just went for Recover again before taking it out with a second, with Execute coming out fourth. Fortunately, I came prepared yet again with a Lumberry, as Aerial Ace doesn't one-shot, and it uses Stun Spore, getting negated as I KO Execute with a second, with Alakazam out last. It only has Future Sight as an attacking move, meaning that two Aerial Aces is more than enough to stop the Psychic Wizard Man Beast thing from spooning my own Psychic Flying Beastial Entity. Oh god, please don't blame me for the fan art that comes from that description. Anyway, Giovanni time, and again, it really isn't that much of a problem. This fight is extremely easy with the exception of Kangaskhan, as Nidorino's a one-shot with Psychic, Rhyhorn's a one-shot with Water Pulse, with Kangaskhan out third. Fake Out still goes first, flinching me, but that's able to let me go ahead and nail two Psychics and an Aerial Ace to take it out, leaving just Nidoqueen. I'm worried slightly about Body Slam since I don't have any berries equipped to nullify Paralysis, but it's fine as Psychic and Water Pulse do manage to take it out after not getting paralyzed by her Body Slam, winning me the fight. Feels good not to have to worry about guaranteed Paralysis coming from a Pokemon on the team. But here's where the run begins to fall apart in terms of challenge. Since Sabrina's next and her cadaver's a one-shot with Aerial Ace, Mr. Mime's a two-shot, Venomoth dies to a Psychic, and Alakazam goes down to two Aerial Aces after setting up a single Calm Mind, winning me the sixth badge and the TM for Calm Mind. But for some reason, I don't immediately throw it on the Lugia. I'll share why in just a moment, but I've gotta say that I think this is the first time I've ran into this trainer here in the Pokemon Mansion, since normally I'm very good about getting through this place in about a minute of real time, but hey, I guess we all make mistakes by accident every once in a while. Me more than others. Anyway, 7th gym time, and Water Pulse is honestly enough to get through the unevolved small fry, while two of them is able to plow through the evolutions like Ninetales and Rapidash, but before I continued past too many of them, I did teach Lugia both Giga Drain and Calm Mind, opting to get rid of both Recover and Aerial Ace rather than getting rid of Water Pulse, simply because Giga Drain should be able to do the job of Recover if I do the late battles correctly, which shouldn't be difficult at all thanks to those high defensive stats that I talked about at the beginning of the video, but I digress. Blaine kicks off with a Growlithe, but I immediately reset and teach Lugia Surf over Water Pulse now that I've made my decision, going back in and using two Calm Minds, taking two Fire Blasts for very minimal damage from Growlithe, or four Annihilating It, Arcanine, Ponyta, and Rapidash with one Surf each, winning me the fight and the Volcano Badge. The same should theoretically happen to Giovanni as well, but since his gym is full of strong trainers, it's kinda hard not to fight at least a few of them just to get those free levels that are already in my way. But sacrificing time isn't what I want to do, so I fight the two required trainers before going in against Giovanni for one last time this run. He leads with Rhyhorn and I went for a single Calm Mind here before going for Giga Drain on his first Rhyhorn, healing to full and taking the rest of his team out with one Surf each, Winning me the fight and make it be realized that Calm Mind isn't much of a strategy, it's more of a over-the-top finisher instead of having to survive more attacks. Alright, half a dozen battles before the run's over and Rival Man number 6 shouldn't be too much trouble. He's still got Pidgeot in lead as they set up two Calm Minds through Feather Dance and a Wing Attack. With that free Feather Dance turn, that basically gives me a whole extra layer of protection for this fight, since despite Wing Attack doing a third of Lugia's HP, I'm able to heal it off with Giga Drain on his Blastoise next turn after taking out Pidgeot no problem, doing over half as he sets up a Rain Dance and finishing it off next turn. The rest of this fight is trivial from here. Surf on Rhyhorn and Growlithe, two Surfs on Execute, only taking a Stun Spore before KOing in the middle of Charging Solar Beam, leaving just Alakazam. 
Of course, Calm Mind should be able to let me take this thing out, but that's not the case as he sets up his own Calm Mind. Kind of irritating since the first surf I land is only able to do a wee bit over half, and since I'm alternating attacks to avoid getting disabled, Giga Drain isn't able to finish it off, so a third attack in Surf is needed to KO, winning me the fight. Well, that was a little bit more of a battle than I expected it to be. But, of course, A, Pidgeot has Whirlwind, and it's not like I want to get swapped out during this fight because I set up too many Calm Mines. Boy, wouldn't that be frustrating in a stupid way to make the Elite Four harder. I definitely wouldn't do that, right? Right? Well, after making all of the necessary preparations except for one of them, I went in. And somehow actually got the TM for Ice Beam as well, which is kind of nice that I had enough money for that. Morlai leads with Dugong, so I of course set up Calm Mind, taking an Ice Beam before she sets up Hail, going plus two and using Giga Drain to attempt to KO Dugong, but of course this doesn't one-shot, putting it in range of a full restore, so I just use a third Calm Mind, still unable to KO Dugong with a Giga Drain, so I just shifted to Surf for that last bit of damage, KOing and leading to Lapras. Dang, even at plus three it doesn't go down to Giga Drain, instead requiring a Psychic to finish it off next turn as Slowbro comes out. Also not going down to Giga Drain in one shot. What is with these Pokemon today? They just keep being wolves! This means she's able to set up a Yawn, which is frustrating, but it does go down next turn as Lugia falls asleep in front of Jinx, waking up with exactly half HP left as I use Giga Drain and Surf to KO it through Ice Punch, leaving just Cloyster. This thing has literally zero special defense, so I just used Psychic as Giga Drain was already down to one power point at this time, finishing it and the battle. Well, that was certainly erratic and not at all planned, but hey, Bruno should be a lot easier to handle. And that assumption was correct, as one Calm Mind ended up being the bane of his entire team. As his first Onyx goes down to Surf, Hitmonchan, Machamp, and Hitmonlee all go down to a single Psychic each, and his last Onyx goes down to Giga Drain healing off the slight damage obtained during the battle, and leading me into Agatha. Now that's how short and sweet these battles should be going, but I don't see that being the case for much longer. Agatha's third of the four, leading with Gengar, which trades double teams as I use two Calm Minds, but that just makes Psychic much harder to land, and by much harder I mean I miss once before it does on the second attempt, leading to Golbat. The rest of the team goes down like a ton of bricks, with Golbat, Arbok, Gengar No. 2, and Haunter all getting Psychics to the head, making them rest in peace once again. Eh, the line doesn't really work when they're all not ghost types, does it? Well, uh, now it's Lance time, I guess, and despite having the Ice Beam TM, I didn't end up using it, as Gyarados is such an easy Pokemon to use Calm Mind against due to the lack of good attacking moves, only using stuff like Dragon Rage and Bite, as I set up five of them, KO and Gyarados with two Giga Drains and getting back most of my HP, leaning into Aerodactyl. Lugia outspeeds, KOing with Surf, leaving just the two Dragonairs and Dragonite to a fall to a Psychic apiece, winning me the fight and making me slightly angry that I wasted my time grabbing the Ice Beam TM from the game corner. Should have known that I didn't need it, but here's where the problem comes in. See, I am an idiot and my HM users are still in the party, meaning I have to deal with Whirlwind for the champion is what I would say if I wasn't such an angry person all the time. See, after resetting twice on Rival Man number 7, I decided to leave with Lapras, swapping back and forth with it and Farfetch so that, that they just would both die and let me do this battle as I had intended. He leads with Pidgeot as the swapping occurs, finally letting me get into Lugia and use Calm Mind. I do this three times as three aerial aces come down, and since I don't want to risk any errant sand attacks, I KO'd with Psychic afterwards, leading to Arcanine. Not sure why I didn't send out Blastoise here, but that's fine as it goes down just as easily to a Surf after landing an extreme speed that did less than I expected. Third out is Blastoise, and sure enough, yeah, Giga Drain does a good number on it. Not quite one-shotting, but after taking a Hydro Pump and his Citrus Berry activates, the second does KO and leave Lugia with pretty high HP going into Rhydon, topping me at full with another Giga Drain and KOing it, leaving just the Battle of the Mines, since everything remaining is part Psychic. Alakazam comes out before Executor, though, and I'm better off for it, since Executor resists all three of my attacking moves, so I went for Surf on Alakazam, barely not one-shotting as he gets off a of Future Sight, putting him in healing range. So I top off with one more Calm Mind, KOing with one Surf next turn, 
as Future Sight gets a little bit of damage to me upon entrance of Executor. I tried my best to take it out before anything bad could happen, but of course, even with plus four special attack, he's able to survive and set up light screen, and then because of that, survive a second surf to put me to sleep with sleep powder before full restoring up, and whittling Lugia down. Fortunately, this just makes Big Bird here angry, leading to a critical psychic that anticlimactically ends the battle, but at least lets me finish the run with a time of 3 hours and 55 minutes. Honestly, I was not expecting a sub 4 hour run whatsoever. With how walled Hoa was against Brock, I sort of expected Lugia to fall to the same fate. Just not nearly as hard due to only having a times 2 weakness instead of times 4, but when you look at the leaderboard, you see that Lugia is sitting pretty well alongside Latias. Exact same time but 3 levels lower, inherently putting it in front of Latias. I guess I also have to chalk it up to the amount of focus I was giving to this run. I wasn't thinking about much else, I wasn't watching YouTube videos like I normally am while recording footage. All I was doing was focusing on the game, attempting to move as fast as possible while making sure my battles weren't scuffed to hell and back, and sure enough, the effort put in made sure that Lugia didn't end up nearly as bad as Ho-Oh. With that being said, we're not quite done with box legendaries for Gen 2, since, yeah, sometimes we do forget that one of the legendary beasts happens to be on the cover of Crystal Version. And next time we handle that run with Suicune. See you guys then! If you guys enjoyed this video, make sure to like, comment, subscribe, click the bell, tell a friend, and don't spend more than a minute doing that, since if you are, you're taking too long. I want to make sure to give a huge shout out to my $10 and above patrons, Justin Dimmenstein, Zachary Kiever, Aaron Rinesmith, Aiden Brannon, Andy Garber, Casper Kirkpatrick, David Dunn, Heimflow, Jacob Johnson, Kyle Campbell, Landon, Michael Evans, Phoenix Fire, and Zeno. Thank you guys so much for your support. If you'd like to support as well, you can head over to my Patreon page, link in the description, where you can get access to stuff like videos early, an exclusive role in my Discord server, link also in the description, challenge requests, and much more. I really appreciate you guys taking the time out of your day to watch this, and I'll see you next time with another challenge. Stay safe, stay healthy, and I'll see you next time.